Hello everyone, I am Dr. Fazil Ahmed, a liver and GI surgeon at South Asian Liver Institute. Naturally, I keep uh, getting asked a lot of questions about liver diseases and liver transplants. And so today, I am here to talk about a few of those. But I have with me someone who I consider a legend and an absolute authority on everything about liver. He is someone who has had 17 years of surgical experience in the UK, including five at King's College, which is considered the world's top liver institute. He has performed over 650 liver transplants and over 250 complex liver resections. Naturally, uh, because of his keen interest in research on liver diseases, he has over 85 publications as well as 100 international uh, articles through his credit. He has spearheaded several programs across the country in many hospitals to make treatment on liver diseases available and affordable for the poor and needy. He was also the first one to perform a successful split liver transplant in combined Andhra and Telangana in 2015. But more importantly, he is someone I consider to be a vast ocean of knowledge and wisdom. It was his vision to transform liver care in this country and therefore to fulfill this vision, South Asian Liver Institute was founded. It is my great pleasure and honor to welcome Professor Dr. Tom Cherry and the founder of South Asian Liver Institute. Dr. Fazal, thank you. Thank you. Welcome. So, uh, Prof, let us get straight into it. Yeah. Naturally, when we talk about liver diseases, the conversation always starts with uh, uh, what are the symptoms of sure. liver diseases. Sure. And uh, jaundice is often considered to be one of the most common symptoms. Correct. So what is your opinion about that, Professor? No, I think, I think you're absolutely right. Jaundice, I guess, would be what people would consider a cardinal sign of liver disease. And they're right in many ways because jaundice is yellow discoloration of the eyes and the palms especially in dark-skinned people. In fair-skinned people, I worked in London for nearly 15 years, and in fair-skinned people, they go yellow all over. It's much easier in them. So jaundice simply means uh, the toxins that is normally uh, detoxified is not being detoxified, and your bilirubin level increases, which is actually green in color, or a green yellow in color, and that is what discolors the skin and the eyes. So the biggest point about jaundice is yes, it is a worrying sign. Most uh, the people with jaundice have what I would think is hepatitis A in our country, which is common, which is spread by uh, contaminated food. Uh, another common time when there is jaundice is in childhood, as babies, immediately after birth, uh, children are sometimes jaundice, which is called physiological. That means it is normal. It should settle down. But Persistent jaundice, that means jaundice that doesn't go away after about 10 to 14 days is definitely a worrying sign and definitely must be investigated, at least with a set of liver function tests and an ultrasound and a review by a specialist. Right. Another common sign uh, of liver failure is uh, ascites or the f accumulation of fluid in the abdomen, but uh, given that Obesity is quite rampant in our country. It is often mistaken for fat. Would you care to shed some light on that? Yes, yes. I mean, you hit the nail on the head. When somebody is fat, it's very difficult even as a doctor to tell the difference between fluid in the tummy and fat in the tummy. Ascites, or which is free water inside the abdominal cavity, is actually a late sign of liver disease and quite uh, a worrying sign. It uh, suggests that not only does that patient have liver disease and that it has a it has advanced to a stage that needs transplantation. So for example uh, early ascites which is small amounts of ascites may be treated with uh, tablets but if it is ascites that is accumulating again and again and needing tapping. Tapping means removal of the fluid, as you know, uh, through a needle. If it is being necessary, if it's made necessary frequently, then that's one of the commonest indications for a liver transplant. Right. 
Now, someone with liver disease may also experience something scary as blood vomitings or dark, tarry stools. Uh, what is your take yes, on that? Professor? Yes, I must say blood vomiting is not only scary, it is one of the commonest causes of death in patients with liver disease. What happens in liver disease is the pressure inside the veins are so high, as you know, and they burst. And this suddenly causes a huge blood loss that can sometimes drop their blood pressures and cause collateral damage such as renal failure, etc. etc. So in, in, uh, in South Asian Liver Institute, we have a careful program called LICAP where patients with liver disease are routinely screened, uh, uh, constantly they are being checked for viruses which, is where, which are these blood vessels and look for cancer so that if any of these things are found early, we can take steps to prevent it rather than suddenly in the middle of the night patients having huge blood loss and ending up in the IC. I must say, uh, Dr. Fazal, one important thing I want to highlight to everybody is that whilst all these symptoms are possible, it is also possible that until the very late stages of liver disease, there are no symptoms or mild symptoms. Like some uh, people just come with itching. Itching is a very common sign. The vast majority of cases, it's something simple on the skin that just needs treatment, sometimes just a moisturizer. But persistent itching that is all over should be looked into. Tiredness. Uh, some patients, all that they have is, I'm very tired, doctor. I don't know why. Of course, tiredness can be just being overworked. But if there is no good reason that you can find, just have a look at the liver uh, casually. And if it is uh, normal, then you don't have to worry about it. I want everybody to know that nearly 10% of people that we transplant have normal liver function tests. Patients whom we are transplanting, that means they've got end-stage liver disease. We never do a transplant unless there is any other option. But these are people with a lung complication of liver disease like hepatopulmonary syndrome or hepatorenal syndrome with renal failure secondary to liver disease. But their liver function tests are not so bad. So uh, it's quite a complex situation, but I think there is a lot of help. Uh, we do offer online consultations as well if you're not close to us and uh, do take help. There is a lot of good treatment. Don't be disheartened by somebody uh, saying, oh, you have chronic liver disease, oh, you have cirrhosis. There's plenty of treatment options. Absolutely. As you heard the professor say, we have a customized, a unique and beneficial uh, liver care program or like app in short, uh, which helps us optimize the treatment for every patient. So do contact us to know more about this. Uh, this is Dr. Fazel from South Asian Liver Institute. Thank you. Thank you.